Hey guys, Lucas here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really well. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that uh, I have been working with this instrument for some time. For those of you who are new to the channel, let me bring you up to speed. This is the Scarab ST by Odd Guitars. Today, we're going to take a look at the specifications of this guitar. We're going to uh, interview the people who designed and created it, and finally hear an original composition that I wrote to showcase this one-of-a-kind instrument. If you're new here and you like guitar related content, lessons, gear reviews, and cool projects like this 3D guitar, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also click that bell icon to uh, get notified every time I upload new content. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks again for your continued support. I think just by looking at it, you can see that the construction of this guitar is really unique. Um, what's different here is that the body of this guitar is 3D printed in full color. And I think it'd be virtually impossible to build a guitar like this using um, traditional methods. The sheer detail um, in its construction is really unlike any guitar I have ever seen. And while the body of the guitar is 3D printed, the remaining construction is quite um, traditional. Here are the specs. The Scarab ST features a Warmoth Pro Warhead uh, maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard and 22 frets. We have a 25 and a half inch uh, scale length as well as a 1 and 11 16th Irvana compensated uh, nut, 6150 frets and a 10 to 16 compound radius. We've got a Shaler 3D6 flat mount bridge, Seymour Duncan hot rotted pickups, Goto 510 tuners. And the controls feature a five way mega switch, one volume and one tone. And we get lots of tonal options this way. Our first position gives us the bridge humbucker. Second position gives us the outer coils in parallel. The third are the inner coils in series. The fourth position is the inner coils in parallel. And finally, the neck humbucker. We've also got Shaler strap locks, uh, pure tone multi jack uh, connection. Uh, Q parts and noms, Diodario strings, and there's a hard shell case available for shipping as well. While the body of the guitar is 3D printed, the center block is good old fashioned wood and all the pickups, the neck and the bridge and those types of components are attached to that. As you'll hear later in the demo, the sustain and tone are actually quite good um, and the details that we get in terms of the color and you know translucent wings on the dragonflies and so on, it's really stunning. I've never seen anything like it. The Scarab ST is the result of a partnership with Odd Guitars and Mamaki USA's 3D printing and engineering team. Odd Guitars is the brainchild of Olaf Deagle. By day, he's a professor of additive manufacturing and product development and the faculty of engineering at the University of Auckland. But by night, he designs and creates some pretty cool uh, guitars. Back in 2011, Olaf printed his first 3D guitar and it wasn't long before people started to ask him if they could get one for themselves. Today, it's grown into a nice little side business for Olaf and Odd Guitars offers a range of models to choose from. All of these guitars use top quality components and combine traditional um, elements of uh, manufacturing with uh, cutting edge 3D technology to create some truly unique instruments like the one you see here. Designs can be customized and tweaked to the player's liking and um, I would highly recommend that you check out his Steampunk Telecaster. It's probably my favorite of all of Olaf's designs designs. Very cool guitar. So what makes the Scarab ST different? Well, in all the previous designs, it was necessary for the guitars to go through a pretty intensive finishing process. Uh, the guitar bodies would be white and would require hours of masking and sanding and painting before they became their final versions. And that's where Mamaki USA comes in. Using Mamaki's technology, Olaf is able to print his guitars in full color and skip that painful masking and painting process that he used to use. As a final step in production of these guitars, they're sprayed with a matte lacquer, but all the color and detail and shape are all created during the printing process. On Guitars connected with Mamaki's Josh Hope, who is the senior manager of uh, 3D printing and engineering projects, and together with application specialist Jaime Martinez, they designed and created this amazing instrument. Um, I'll put links to both of the companies uh, in the description below, so if you're interested in connecting with Olaf or if you want more information on Mamaki, you can check them out on their websites. In the meantime, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Olaf and Josh to discuss the creation of this amazing instrument. After the interview, I want to share um, a piece that I wrote to showcase this guitar. It's an original uh, instrumental composition that features four different guitar tracks. You can kind of get an idea of some of the tones you can get from, uh, from this guitar. You can have the whole tone wood debate if you like. And also, let us know, what do you think of the Scarab ST? Would you rock this? I know I would, and I know my back would thank me for it too. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. Remember to like, 
subscribe and share it with your friends. Every little bit helps. Um, I'll also post my social media links below if you're really bored. Thanks again for watching and enjoy the video. You know, it's, it's a really interesting uh, instrument in, in the sense that, it, you know, it combines all these different methods of, of manufacturing to create what is, um, you know, a, a beautiful and, and usable uh, instrument. I wanted to I'll take a minute and introduce each of you. So obviously we have Josh Hope here, who's our senior manager of 3D and uh, engineering projects and, and Olaf. Quite a background you have in additive manufacturing and you're currently with uh, Auckland uh, University in New Zealand. So um, first of all, let me ask you, let me start with you, because if we go back a little bit, you've made a ton of different um, specifically 3D instruments. I've seen uh, guitars, drums, a saxophone. That must have been really challenging to do. I think there were, I think that I even see a keyboard, a lot yep. of stuff. So so tell me a little bit about how you got into additive manufacturing and how we, how we got connected with, uh, with Mamaki here. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I've been using, you know, additive manufacturing for, you know, close to 30 years. Yeah, you know, back in the early mid '90s, I was developing products, and I used it purely for prototyping. So I was doing a lot of like theater lighting control systems and spotlights, and we'd come up with a design. We needed a prototype, so we'd print the parts just to test the idea, not really for manufacturing. And I saw the technology getting better and better and better over the years. And I think it was back in 2011 there was a story in the Economist, one of the big business magazines, called "Print Me a Stradivarius," and somebody took the you know, catted up a Stradivarius, printed a violin. And I saw that story in, from my younger days, I've played music since I was a kid. And I saw this and I said, that is so cool. And I, you know, I, I just thought, you know, I wonder, could I print a real playable electric guitar? Right. So I designed my first back in 2011. It was sort of a Steinberger shape, triangular shape. And it wasn't done that shape because it was a sexy shape for a guitar, but that's the biggest I could print in the machine I had at the time. Gotcha. And I, you know, I was amazed. It played well. It sounded good. So I did a bit of a blog about it. And I started getting emails from musicians around the world who'd never quite seen anything like that from an aesthetic point of view, just that, you know, the complicated geometry. And they started emailing me and saying, can I buy one? So I sort of scratched my head and said, oh, crap, what do I do now? And I sold one. I sold another one. I'm um, just... Uh, Two weeks ago, I finished number 87. So I've got wow. about a dozen collection and the rest sold to people around the world. The vast majority, I mean, I've printed two of them in aluminium, but most of them are printed nylon. So it's white nylon as it comes out of the machine. They have to be painted, which can be a time consuming process. So you mentioned right. the steampunk, all the moving gears. You can imagine airbrush. I have an artist friend who does those for me and he has to move the gears a bit, airbrush, move the gears. It's not a nice one to airbrush. Sure. And most Recently, I mean, mostly I'm a bass player, so I made myself a Beatles themed bass, you know, Paul McCartney, oh, Herfner's violin bass. Okay. And inside you know, all the iconic scenes from the Beatles, you know, got the walk across Abbey Road, Yellow uh -huh. Submarine, the Sergeant drum kit. And my wife lovingly painted that for me, like with a paintbrush by hand, she went in and reached and she did an incredible job. I mean, it's a labor uh -huh. of love. I suspect she would have hated me by the end of it because it was not <laughs> easy to paint. And that's what got me into color printing. That's what got me sort of looking at the Mimaki machine. So, I, yeah. you know, I wanted, instead of having to spend all this labor painting it, is there a way of printing it in full color? Yeah. And that's when I did the Arab guitar, just, you know, again, to trial the technology to see how sure. good it was. Yeah. And again, blown away by the quality of the colors on it. It's just incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and Josh, you know, from, from on your side, tell me a little bit about you know, the design and, and, and the printing, how long did it take to, to actually put all this together before you had a completed part that you could send back to Olaf for final assembly? Yeah, so we we, we got the file from Olaf and, and I have to give a ton of credit to uh, Jaime Martinez. Jaime is, is, he does all of our file prep. He runs the printers, he does the finishing. And uh, he worked with Olaf. I think there was a little bit of back and forth about some of the part and thicknesses and sizing and things like that. But but once that was done, the file was taken in. Uh, Jaime did uh, redo the wood grain, I think, which ended up being uh, absolutely uh, beautiful. It's, and it's crazy. Used, yeah, he used a a, a software called uh, Adobe Substance, uh, and and the the wood grain looks yeah it it looks phenomenal. It really it looks does. like wood. Yeah, yeah. That's it's no. incredible. Josh, back to what you were we were talking about, the work that, that Jaime did on this in terms of design and, and, and printing. Um, can you tell us a little bit about software and the intricacies? I mean, I've seen some of the renderings uh, of the design. I mean, it looks pretty, uh, very intricate. Yeah, so actually, I, I would ask Olaf, what was the what was the guitar originally designed it? Yeah, so I, I designed it in SolidWorks. It's the, it's the CAD package I happen to use. 
Um, it's probably not the ideal software for designing organic shapes, but it's what I've been using for 30 years, so it's what I'm used to. Doesn't really matter what software you use, so long as you're comfortable with it. But you know, as you get into 3D printing, you very quickly find you cannot do everything with one piece of software. So there's, you know, I did some of the colors in SolidWorks, but textures like the wood texture and various others, you need other software to do that. And some of it I did in Magic, some of it Jaime did in in uh, either 3D Link or, or Adobe. Uh, was it Adobe Presence, the, the one you used? Or, yeah. In uh, Blender, initially, just to, to take a look at it, figure it out. Um, then he used Adobe, Adobe Substance to rewrap the, the texture on it. We used the uh, Mamaki 3D Link software to lay it out. The actual print, yeah. though, it was a little over 31 hours. And then once it's printed, we have a, uh, a water-soluble support material, which all of those open places in the guitar that you're marbling over as it's printed are, is actually filled with this support material, which is a, it's kind of a waxy consistency. So that entire piece um, goes into a, a water bath with a bit of detergent, and then all of that is dissolved away. And what you're left with is the guitar that you're holding in your hand. And I think he's got probably about 12 hours of uh, soaking in order to get all of the support material to dissolve, just because it's so intricate. I mean, I mean, Olaf has some fine, fine details in there. Uh, again, that I don't think is showing up in the camera, but there's flowers in, in there, there's bugs in there, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, the so translucent, uh, the translucent the, wings on the dragonflies too. Um, yeah. I'd like to just take an opportunity again and just thank you both. It's been super fun. Uh, I can't wait till we get this put together for everybody to see. Thanks, Lucas. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. At one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed.